Okay. Um, I kind of have an internet connection, so I'm going to try to show you some things live as well as the things that I have uh, already cached here. And uh, I also wanted to show you, I actually have a, a device and I can show you it running on hardware, albeit... Yeah. Also, there's an extra device here, so I'll pass oh, it on. Oh, cool, okay. They broke bling, people? Yes. It exists. It's not paper, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so where should I begin? Um, I'm sorry I didn't have time to prepare some slides, but I have a lot of live content for you to kind of digest anyways, and it'll even be up here. Uh, so, um, I guess I should start off with uh, what is Firefox OS and why did we decide to write our own mobile operating system? What are the advantages? Um, and the answers for that are that we wanted to, uh, we, we looked at the mobile operating system, we looked at the entire space and we noticed that if someone wants to write uh, applications for the mobile space, they either need to know Java and understand a horrific APK or they need to learn uh, Objective C and understanding another horrific uh, SDK. Um, and we decided, why does it have to be that way? We already have tons of de developers in this world that know HTML, they know JavaScript, they know CSS, they've made websites before. Why can't they do the same thing in the mobile space and have it be just as good? Uh, so that's one of the reasons. The other reason is that uh, with a lot of these uh, mobile uh, kind of uh, walled gardens uh, of Android and iOS, it's kind of the antithesis of what we think that the web needs to do to stay open. And so a lot of the principles that we've uh, built, uh, that we use to uh, start the project for Firefox OS are ones that will keep the web open. Things like uh, existing standards, things like being able to share things across platforms, sharing resources, that sort of thing. Um, so as I said, apps are written in what you already know, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. Um, now I'm going to start up a little emulator. Uh, this is one of the cool tools, and this is kind of uh, our gift to you, so you can go try it at home without needing any special hardware from us, even though the hardware is kind of cool. So I'm just going to open up uh, Firefox here. And it's going to ask me what uh, what profile do I want, and I just have the special one called B2G. And I have a couple add-ons here for Ubuntu because I haven't opened this in a while. Uh, so this is just an add-on that you can go download yourself. Uh, if I go into add-ons here, uh, it's just called the Firefox OS Simulator. And to start it, all you really do is you go to Tools and Web Developer, and you start up the Firefox OS Simulator. And then over here you can click start, and over here you can add a directory, so if you want to add a web app, you don't need to do anything complicated like compile things, you just need to work in one directory, and when you want to add it, you click add directory. Uh, so I'm going to start this here, and it started over on my other monitor. Ah, there it is. So it kind of does some fun things here, so I can bring it up, I can unlock it, I can use this just as a... Uh, just as I would on my other device. So I have my smaller device here and it looks pretty much the same. Uh, so in here you can see a couple interesting things like we've included some applications. Uh, what you're looking at here is the, the home screen for it. Uh, this is just one home screen. This is called Gaia. It's the one we wrote. But there's no, uh, there's no reason why this has to be the canonical one. This, just like all the applications, is written in HTML, JavaScript, and CSS. And uh, the source code for this is online. You can go grab it from GitHub or you can grab it from git.mozilla.org. You can modify it. You can play with it. If you want, you can write your own home screen from scratch. You can do away with the concept of buttons. You can maybe have a list that you fling by. You can have widgets for everything. We, we really leave this open and up to you. Um, so these are kind of the applications it comes with. Obviously, we have a web browser. Um, we have a contacts application. We have IM services like text messaging. And we also have a phone call. And so if I click the phone call, I can start up a phone call app, I have a dialer, I can do different things, and this is all uh, HTML uh, as well. And I can uh, click things here, make a phone call. <sighs> hey look, it's text, I can highlight it. <laughs> 
Um, and uh, one of the interesting things is that with this, we had to develop some new standards and reuse some existing standards for things because when we started this project, JavaScript didn't have the functionality to make a phone call. So those are kind of standards that we had to create. Did it finally work? I heard a noise. No, that was me, sorry. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what about the telecall URL? Sorry? What about the telecall URL? Tell colon URL. Yeah, because there was a, a URI scheme that's been around for maybe 10 years that, that allows you to put phone numbers in as a, as a URL and you can click on a call to phone number. Okay. Yeah, that, that would just be like a URL handler, but uh, how do, like in JavaScript, in a web browser, how do you deal with the audio elements from the microphone and outputting the sound? Yeah. So those are kind of the uh, problems that we were trying to solve. Um, Let me see if I can do this. Uh, so I gave a similar presentation like this at uh, Fos.in, and I was able to flip this around and stick my camera and start mPlayer up with the camera facing it, and that way I could give everybody a live demo. But now I can use this. Uh, document camera. Cool. OK. Yeah. Oh. One of those. Uh, okay, cool. So this is a live phone. Um, it's a little bit similar. It gives you some hints that there's a little lock button down there. I can go click unlock. I don't have a SIM card in here, so unfortunately the only phone number I can dial is 911. I don't really want to do that. Uh, oh, yeah, it's quad zero for it. Yeah, triple zero, okay. <laughs> Um, and here we have, we can see we have the concepts of uh, several workspaces. So this is the standard one, and I can flip left and flip right, and I have more applications in here. Unlike Android, we don't have the, the app drawer concept, but if you write your own home screen, you can add that if you want it. Um, so we, we have some sort of interesting apps here. Uh, we have some, like a gallery app built in, uh, settings obviously, uh, there's some games like Tetris, and there's also the Marketplace, which I would love to show you, but it needs a network connection. Um, also, the one you'll notice that you probably haven't heard of before is this one down in the corner, Hacker Beach. Uh, I was at a conference last, uh, last month, and um, all across the world there were uh, Firefox OS hack days. And so since this conference was called Hacker Beach, we decided to make a Hacker Beach map and then make an app for it. And we can see that it requires an internet connection. <laughs> So I wish there were more I could show you about this, although many of these things are going to say the same thing. Uh, one of the interesting things is that even the applications like the camera are, uh, are HTML. So I can go take a picture of the audience and uh, tap it, and now we have some things. And <laughs> they, they are people. <laughs> Oh, okay. I've got wireless access, so if you're just trying to access the market here. the marketplace looks like. Okay. I'm going to leave that here too. But it's going to be there. It's not going to be there. Ah, oh, we're tethering to your phone. Okay. Can we swap the phone so yeah. the lights reflecting? Just yeah. so turn, turn the light off. The back of the phone should be bright. Oh, this light. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so here's the marketplace. Um, it looks just kind of like you would think a marketplace would. We have a bunch of categories here, some interesting, uh, interesting things like games. So we can go, let's try to add, uh, this game looks pretty well reviewed. I can just tap free, and then it will think about installing, and then ask me for some permissions. I can click install, and uh, it should just add it to my desktop. So I can go home here, and... Uh, All the applications are located on desktop? Uh, yes, for the home screen, they're all uh, loaded on the desktop. Uh, there it is. And so I think it's still... Uh, you, can, you can swipe the notification to see where it is. Ah, there okay. Right. Write it. Okay. And so, wow, it's a little bit difficult to see. <laughs> <laughs> what? It's probably not the best color. No. 
I, I, because it's just I, yeah, maybe I could turn the brightness down. Yeah, try the settings. I think it's a black <laughs> control, the left hand edge of the camera. Uh, yeah, oh. does that do something? This is a uh, zoom 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 zoom. Zoom. Um, Display. Uh, there you go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Feature number one. <laughs> yeah. So we went into the marketplace. Uh, that's nice. We downloaded our app. So we can go over here, we can launch our app. And it's actually just a... There. Uh, it's a mobile website. We can enter our name. Uh, I'll just say our name is LCA. I don't know what this game is, so uh, we'll see. Of course, Dan wants to do this to you all the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So how tough is the hardware that you're using? Uh, it's <laughs> yeah. Actually, quick question. Is the, are these just... Um, are these custom made for Firefox OS, these phones, or are they just... No. These, these are kind of the mules we're using. If you'll notice in the bottom here, we have a nice set of standard Android buttons that you'd uh -huh. find on any Android phone. So we're using that kind of as a basis for hardware. Um, but one of the concepts is that we want this to be able to run on uh, uh, low-end devices. Uh, so these hardware, like, uh, I think this is about the same thing, but this is about the equivalent of a uh, T-Mobile G1 or an HTC Dream, as it were called. It, so it's 600 megahertz. It's got 256 megs of RAM. They're not impressive specs, unless we're talking 2008 standards. But Firefox OS still runs really fast on it. So if we scale that to even better hardware, then things look even better. What was that Hacker Beach you were thinking you were saying? Oh, Hacker Beach, yeah. <laughs> that is in the marketplace. So if we're connected here, we can go see. Um, it, it was a, a JS hackathon in Vietnam for the entire month of January. Is it possible to just click view source? Um, uh, on the device, I don't think so, although one of the things that we baked in was uh, a, new, a new feature in Firefox, both desktop and mobile, is the ability to do uh, debugging and uh, uh, profiling remotely. Mm -hmm. So you can set this to connect to a desktop, you can connect a desktop to this, and as you would have the developer tools on the desktop, you'll have them mirrored onto the, uh, the mobile device. So, so like DDMS works for Android when you're trying to debug on the actual device? Right. Yep, so that's one of the really nice features of it. Um, I'm not sure if that's, uh, I think that's in the latest version, the latest released version of Firefox. I know this app works because I just used it not too long ago. Uh, this was just a simple JavaScript map. There we go. It was a simple JavaScript map that uh, we could mirror on GitHub. Okay, we'll install it. And add new points on. They're just JSON coordinates. So it's a pretty simple app, but it worked really well. And I, I submitted a couple data points to it as well. So, and, so mm -hmm. what's it like without, the, once you've installed these apps, which are HTML5 apps, I'm assuming, mm -hmm. what's it like without a data connection? Without a data connection. So one of the... I hope I don't kill that. But no, it's fine. <laughs> oh. Um, so it caches a lot of the local content. Mm -hmm. So the, the actual HTML and JavaScript and CSS required to render the app. Uh, it's one of the settings in the, uh, the metadata file that goes with each application is what should we cache locally. That way you don't need an internet connection to use a calculator. <laughs> so this is unfortunately not on the phone, but that is an app from the Firefox Marketplace. Oh. oh. I thought you saw You have no data, look. Yeah, I purposely disabled that because it's much Wait, aren't I tethered to you? Why yes. do you do that? Well, because you already installed the app. Like <laughs> okay. So this is just a cool little map application. It works well enough. I can tap points and see some data about it. But it's all HTML, JavaScript, CSS. And if we look on the, uh, the marketplace on uh, 
Android for Firefox, we can see the same application. It's the same code running. If we look for the desktop as well, we can find the same application with the same code running. So it's, it's nice to be able to write your application once and use it in these multiple places. So how does the security module like we've done? Like when you install the apps on Android and ask you, you want to allow it to do this, this, and this. Right. Is there a similar sort of thing or, or is it because in the browser you don't have to do No, that's one of the things that we added was um, in the browser we already had kind of a, an, a piecemeal permission model for things and we had to refine that further for Firefox OS. So just like Android, you get uh, notifications that this is going to use data, it can make phone calls on your behalf, it'll send text messages, it can sniff your phone book, whatever it wants. So, so when we installed there, there wasn't any of that, is that just because they were nice applications? Yeah, yeah. So the applications that we used uh, didn't require any extra permissions, so they didn't get any. Sorry, but the, um, the hacker, the hacker beach map. Mm -hmm. Well, so that just changed to a map image that wasn't actually accessing something like Google Maps or anything like that. So it, uh, if I remember correctly, it cached the map image for that small island, right. but the rest of it, it would have to go fetch every time it wanted. Right. Okay. Yeah. So basically, you've got a phone there that's running Firefox, and Gecko is rendering all the images on your phone. Yes. So it's the, uh, it's the same engine as with desktop or with mobile. The only thing is we've been able to add some JavaScript calls to it that we also added to uh, desktop and Android. So things like, uh, if you notice when I had the simulator up here on my laptop, I was able to get the battery life and other things from it. Yeah, uh, just a quick one. This is, uh, some of the concepts are similar to Apache called over a phone gap. Um, mm -hmm. Is there a... I mean, is there quite a convergence, or is it a very dissimilar in their approach? So do they have APIs for talking to the GPS and all sorts of things. Right, right, they do. Um, uh, with at least PhoneGap, what I remember is they didn't really try to add standards to make it. Uh, I mean, they didn't try to upstream the standards that they made uh, for things like the camera, for things like making phone calls, things like that. So even though it both supported uh, Android and iOS, it, you didn't really have the same full featuredness as you did writing native applications. Yeah? Well, then we just wait for Mark. <laughs> He's blind. Mozilla um, is um, very successful with accessibility strategy uh, has been to implement the accessibility APIs for various operating systems, including, for example, the uh, ATK um, APIs of GNOME. Uh, but of course, given that Firefox OS has, as I understand, a very minimal Linux uh, base uh, underlying it, uh, they give rise to the question of what the accessibility strategy is, so I was wondering if you could outline how it's uh, done or what plans are if it hasn't been done yet. So, uh I don't actually know um, what our strategy for implementing the accessibility on Firefox OS is, but I do know that a lot of that uh, feature set was baked into Gecko and the browser core. So it's just up, for, up to us to expose the lower level elements of the system in order to take advantage of all that. I, I wish I had a better answer for you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Um, is there an API for ad hoc Wi-Fi? <laughs> or ad hoc Wi-Fi? <laughs> oh, I'm not quite sure. Oh, you're for the Servo project, aren't you? Yes. S spin up an access point and I'll see if I can see it from the phone. Oh, yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, yeah, sure. Is the phone running? There's hundreds already in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, this is my beautiful assistant, Sham, if you aren't familiar already. <laughs> I'd like to buy a bell. Oh, did you already enable it? There's a. Uh, I have no idea if it's. Do you have to enable it? Should work. 
Yeah. Okay. So I do know that uh, to get ad hoc access points to work, it's the same as an Android. You just have to go toggle a bit in the settings of WPA supplicant because we also use WPA supplicant since it's the best thing for embedded Linux. Yep. So you toggle that one bit, you should be able to see ad hoc access points. Would we love to have that actually in there and not have to group them all in the right? Yeah. I agree. <coughs> File a bug. Yep, and so it's related to that, if you have to put a, a lump of C code in there, is that actually possible to do? A lump of C code. Yeah. You can, yeah, you can do it. Um, you probably won't get much help or support, but there's no reason. I mean, the code's all up on GitHub right now. You can check it out. You can modify it. Um, and I'm not sure about the uh, file and release devices, but at least the development devices are all pre-rooted. You actually use ADB just like you do with an Android device, and you have a root shell. <laughs> <laughs> Porting to a new device? I'm glad you asked that because that's part of the presentation that I didn't quite get to yet. So <laughs> um, I'll get to it now. Firefox OS, uh, we started by using the Android build system since it already supports a whole bunch of hardware. And we still use it for a lot of the same elements. Uh, so if you're familiar with the CyanogenMod project at all, there's a separate, I mean, there's, you don't have to be that familiar, but there are different Git repositories with support for specific devices. We have a convenience script that allow you to pick up those and place them directly into Firefox OS and build for any device that supports CyanogenMod 9 or newer. So, if I'm getting this straight, basically Firefox OS, the development environment, sits on top of the Linux environment for the core stuff. Right. So the HTML and everything else is separate, but works through APIs with the basic environment. Mm -hmm. So that's how you can lift from the CyanogenMod core in putting them for your Firefox stuff. Right. Uh, the CyanogenMod core stuff is basically kernel modules, the kernel for the device, um, some low-level settings like what resolution does this have, uh, some basic things like that, really device-specific stuff. But uh, it, it really took uh, Android to a very fundamental level, like we tore out Java. There's no more Java in there anywhere. So it's... <laughs> And so it's pretty much just a Linux kernel, and then on top of a Linux kernel, we got this frame buffer object, and we start Firefox, or we start Gecko, and we point it towards this frame buffer object, and then we draw things directly to it. So it's easy, it's low level, works on low, low end hardware. It's great. Yeah, I can see that your this OS is quite similar to HP's uh, earlier web OS using the exactly the same technology. Yes. But it's dying. Um, I think it's because partially it's under pressure of iOS and Android, and partially because the company's strategy. Uh, what do you think? What makes Firefox OS going to win in the market? So. <laughs> Uh, so with WebOS, they, they did a couple things wrong, at least in my opinion. Um, ooh. Uh, now we do need a light, or, or do we? <laughs> okay. Uh, at some point. Yeah. Um, you're about 10 minutes over. So, and I think there's a huge amount of We're going to hang it on so we can just do it outside. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. yeah. I'd like to answer your question, so if yeah. I can go outside, I can answer it for you. I think they want to kick us out. All right. I'd like to have a big thank you for all the speakers that have come on.